Okay, based on popular demand, I'm going to show how to emulate N64 games on a Raspberry Pi. I'm using a Raspberry Pi 2, mainly because of the new processor in that model. It's quad-core, it's much faster than the old series, and it's also got twice as much memory. Generally speaking, running N64 games emulated on a Raspberry Pi version 2 is going to be a much faster, better experience. So, if you do want to do this, it, you're probably best off getting a Raspberry Pi 2. It will work on the old models, the B&B Plus. You can get it to work, it can be usable, but you are often going to be struggling about the limitations with the CPU. So largely, the release of the new Raspberry Pi has let a lot more people get access to and easily run um, the N64 games. Now, it's not necessarily as easy as running all the other systems like the Mega Drive, the Super Nintendo, the NES, etc. That's pretty much um, extremely straightforward, and there is a little bit more config to do with the N64, but not much. It's pretty simple. There's only a few steps, and once you've done it, um, that's pretty much it. You're away. Okay, so as I said, this is a Raspberry Pi 2. It's overclocked to the standard uh, 1000 megahertz, and that's available to set in the raspberry-config um, setup. So you just run sudo, as you can see on the screen there, um, sudo raspberry config. If I run that, um, you would just go down here to overclock, and that's just warning you about overclocking. And then here you choose Pi 2, which is what this one's already set to. I'll cancel out of that. Um, all I've done here, this is a stock 2.5.0 um, image from RetroPi, and I've just logged in as user Pi password Raspberry. I've expanded the card to make sure that I've got use of all 16 gig of the card. I mean, obviously it measures it as 15 gig, but it's a 16 gig card, and it's got plenty of space on. But besides that, I've not done anything on this card. Um, okay, so what we're going to do is... If you do want to see the performance of N64 games, there are plenty of other videos that I've uploaded showing the speed. And you'll see in that that there are some video glitches in some of the videos. And that can be down to extra configuration needed, which we'll go over here and you can see how to tweak it and maybe get more out of it than um, than I've already done on the, on the demos. But just a reminder, don't try this on a 2.3 RetroPie image or before because you'll probably get a few configuration issues. 2.4 series and 2.5 are probably fine. And also, if you've got a Raspberry Pi 2, you need to use 2.5.0 or newer because the 2.4s aren't run for it. You can convert one to run, but it won't run out of the box. Or separately, you don't have to use an image at all. You don't even have to use RetroPie if you don't want. You can just download the emulator to your um, SD card, maybe you're running Raspbian, and you can just run it separately. So there's a few ways of getting the emulator on, but this guide is largely around how to do it with um, an image from petrockblock.com. Okay, so there's two ways of running this, um, running N64 games in this type of image, and I'll show you where you can see the difference between the two. One is using an emulator called Moopin64+, Plus, and the other is still using Moopin64+, Plus, but through RetroArch. So you get the benefits of the extra RetroArch configuration, like maybe shaders or um, the way the controller configs or any other option that's available in RetroArch. But generally speaking, from what I've read, you're better off running it straight from Moopin64 Plus outside of RetroArch. But you can do both. You can try both, see what works best for you. And both of these um, ways of working, you can configure the video um, to operate slightly differently as well. So they're both they're both a possible choice. Okay, so the first way we're going to look at is where this is all configured when you run emulation station. And you can do that if you change directory to etc forward slash emulation station. Hit enter there. And in this directory, we're going to edit with nano, or we're going to view anyway, with nano and the file called essystems.cfg. And with that on the screen there, I'm going to do control W and you get a little search box down the bottom. I'm going to look for N64, and I can see here that uh, the first instance, N64, it's got um, name Nintendo 64, that's just an aesthetic name to call it something, and this one's specifically the Moopin64+, Plus, and it will run ROMs for N64 that have this extension, Z64, or N64, or V64. So as long as your uh, ROMs end in that extension, it should work okay. And what it's going to do, if you select games that you put in the directory, I'll show you in a minute. And the first thing it's going to do is run the, query, the run the option for you to change the video mode. And you'll see in 2.5.0, before you run any game, 
and I think it's pretty much any of them, you'll get an option to press X or C as it boots. And if you do that, if you tap that X button, it will kick you into a menu to select your, your video preferences. So if you run an N64 ROM and you get a really tiny screen or it's just in the corner, um, first you want to make sure that the, the video mode in... Uh, I guess the RetroPie setup and the emulation station command here is right. So you might want to choose 720p and you know that, right, okay, I'm outputting 720p. If it's not right, then I can go to the emulator and tweak it and we'll have a quick look at that in a minute. So anyway, that's just the first thing it does. Then it's going to run the actual file and this is the path where the, the emulator lives. APT RetroPie emulators, Mupin64+, Plus, which is the emulator, bin for binary and the file that um, is going to run is Mupin64+, Plus when you emulate uh, the ROMs in this directory. And I did miss up here, this is the directory where you put your ROMs. You've got um, the home directory which is forward slash home, forward slash pi, then RetroPie, forward slash ROMs and importantly it's the folder called n64 hyphen mupin64 plus if you put them in there then mupin64 plus will run them itself as opposed to through retroarch okay so we just scroll across here then when it runs it's going to look for a config directory here and that is in opt retropy configs n64 so that's quite important as well you can configure this emulator by going into that directory and changing the files um, then we've got a data directory, which is apt retropy configs n64 again. So data files that it requires and the config are in the same file there. And then it just passes the ROM and runs. So that's one way that you can emulate um, with for the n64. Put your ROM files in this directory and mupin64 plus will run it itself. Alternatively, if we control W again and I'll search for n64 again, it's obviously brought me there and just going across the lines here I'm just going to go forward until it scrolls down to the next instance N64, N64 right now Control W, Enter this is the second way of doing it you've got again Nintendo 64 name N64 but this time if you put your ROMs in Home Pi Retro Pi ROMs N64 it will run differently now still, this will still run Z64, N64, V64 but it will also run ZIP so RetroArch will look in a ZIP file and automatically read the files within that so you can save space if you want to or just keep it generally I mean not tidy because I think all the ROMs are a single file anyway but it's it's a nice option to have you can use ZIP files with the RetroArch again you get the command down here that it runs with the video modes then it runs RetroArch here and then after RetroArch it loads in the Mupin64 plus um, libretro library file so it basically passes it through RetroArch but like I say I have read that it isn't as efficient as the Mupin64 plus but maybe in your experience it's better in this folder maybe you should um, put your ROMs in N64 it certainly wouldn't hurt to try it's um, you can run both at the same time you don't have to choose one or the other the only problem is if you put ROMs in this N64 directory and the Mupin Plus 64 directory then in emulation station you'll have two logos that say N64 and they look the same and you can lose track so just be aware that you want to make sure you, when you're running a particular game you, you know you're running it in the right emulator. Um, okay, and then as per all the RetroArch, it runs the RetroArch configuration and then all, all your RetroArch configurations can um, kick into that as well. So just to be clear, there are those two ways of running it. You don't have to use one over the other, you could use both, but typically it's the first option we went over is a better bet where you just run Mupin64 Plus in itself. I hope that's clear, if it's not, um, put a question up on that forum link that I'll put in the description and any other detail and I can go over that. But that's where it's configured to run them both. So now what we'll do is go back to the home directory with CD space tilde and in here we're going to change to RetroPie and now I'm going to list that directory. We've got the ROMs, change it to the ROMs directory and I'm going to list that out. There we go. So these are the um, predefined folders that RetroPie 2.5.0 have set up and the ones we're interested in are here N64 and N64 hyphen Mupin 64 plus so however you decide to put your ROMs in and there's a separate video I've got about that if you're not sure how to put ROMs in um, you can either uh, copy it with FTP or you can use a Windows Samba share um, or you can put a USB stick in so there's different ways of getting them there but when you've got your ROMs in the folder and I would recommend this one and that's that's what I've been using today 
uh, you're ready, pretty much ready to go. But there is more configuration that's useful to know. But that's the, the path you want to go. So if we change into that, n64 hyphen mupin64 plus, and I type print working directory, this is the full directory that you might see in your FTP client, for example. Home, pi, retro pi, roms, n64 hyphen mupin64 plus. And if you put files in there that have got the right extension that we saw earlier, like um, n64, v64, z64, then it should run without a problem. Okay, and largely that's because this RetroPie um, image has already been configured um, quite happily to run that. Now, what we're going to do is go to the config file section, and if we change directory to forward slash um, apt, forward slash RetroPie, forward slash configs, and in this directory, you've got the predefined configs for most of the systems that you're going to run here. And the one we're interested in, obviously, is N64. So change directory to N64. Now I'm going to go list the directory and put hyphen LAH to list it nicely. It shows the hidden, any hidden files and in a nice sort of readable format. There aren't that many files in there. You've got a font file, which is no doubt used at some point for, you know, like putting text, I guess, at, at some point. Then you've got... Um, a few files here, and I'll just briefly go over their purpose. You've got GLES 2 N64. Now, with MOOP N64+, Plus, as far as I'm aware, there are at least two, maybe there's more, but there's at least two video plugins. One is called GLES 2 N64, and this is you know, how it's, it helps MOOP N64 Plus output the, the video and how it should output the video that's compatible with the ROM, so it's, it's like a video plugin. This isn't the plugin, it's just a configuration file for it, but that's one of the video plugins, GLES 2 N64. The other one is called RICE, or RICE Video, or, but this is the other one anyway, the config file for it. So if you're running a, a game and the graphics look a bit, I don't know, distorted or, or missing certain elements, it could be worth trying the other, um, the other graphic, um, the plugin. So, by default, GLES 2 N64 is configured, and that's the one that will run because apparently it should be that should be successful with most of the games. Hence, it's the default. But you can change it if you want. So we're, we'll go over how to change that. Um, the GLES 2 N64 ROM is another configuration file for that video, which mostly lists the ROM, the N64 ROMs, and custom tweaks for it. Uh, we'll, we'll have a quick look through them all in a second, actually. But that's largely geared to deal with specific ROMs in slightly different ways. Then the next one is very important, you've got input auto CFG and that deals with your input for the games. So because we're not in RetroArch, we don't use any of the old um, uh, RetroArch configuration files which usually deal with massive swathes of systems and games, you've got to do it separately. Now it is a, ver a fairly large file and it's got a lot of um, controllers already programmed in, so chances are your might already work. Mine didn't. Mine was an iBuffalo USB pad, which is probably a bad pad to try and play N64 games with. It's missing half the buttons for it. But um, I've written a, a sort of mini um, input file for that, so I can show you how to get an iBuffalo working. And based on that, you should see the principle for them all. But obviously, for N64, I'd really recommend getting a either a USB stick or some joypad that's got most of the button. Um, available to it. Otherwise, in some games, you just won't be able to control it very well. Okay, the next one is mupin 64 plus.cfg, and that is um, that's geared for the main emulator core. It's got all of the main configuration options in there, and we'll have a look, quick look through that. mupin 64 plus.ini, I think that relates to the games again, but we'll check in a minute. And the last one is the configuration file for the Rice video plugin if you choose to use that. Okay. Now the first file we'll look at, or we could go down these in order, let's go down these in order. We've got um, the video plugin file first, so if I edit this, and again you don't have to do any of this, you can just put your ROMs in, play, and you may well be away, there might not be any extra to do. But if you do want to configure files, this is um, where you do it in this folder, just a, a reminder, it's the um, OPT RetroPie Configs N64 folder, on, and I'm using an image 2.5.0, that's why it's there. Okay, so if I edit the first one, which is gles 2 n 64conf Okay, now this one, um, as I said, is the graphics plugin for the N64. And one thing I did before, I haven't done it on this because it's a pretty clean install, I just changed my screen width to match my, um, 
match my screen that I'm using. I'm using a 720p screen, so I think on this one, I set it to 720p but with a 4-3 ratio, so I think it, I put 960 width, 720 height. Down here, um, to centre it, I put 960p, 720 height, and then on this one, no, I think this one I put, like, this is a bit vague, I realise, but you'll get the idea. There are three sets to um, change. You've got down here the frame buffer width, the window width, and the screen width. So the screen width here, the physical pixel dimensions, I put 1280 by 720, so my full screen res. Then down here, because I want to keep the 4-3 ratio, I put 960 by 720, and down here I put um, 960 by 720. And that gave me a 4-3 ratio on a 720 screen quite happily. Um, but I did get, I couldn't centre it. It was the right size, but it wasn't centred. But I'm sure if I read this a bit more, I could uh, work out how to do that. But feel free to have a look through that and um, change sort of settings that you might need to to tweak and improve the output. Um, for example, here, run uh, enable fog is by default off, so that probably helps the CPU. Um, and here, I don't know what enable primitive Z is, but it's enabled, and maybe if I turn that off, it would run a bit faster at the expense of losing a certain thing. So you've got the options here to turn them on and off with ones and zeros. You can see what works best for you, really, or what works best for different games. Okay, so that's that file that you um, can use, tweak, and change. And the next one we've got is nanoglesrom.com, gles 2 n 64 rom.conf and in here you've just got a series of settings for each individual games so depending on the parameters that it'll accept there's not stack loads there but you can see it's got um, variables like target fps uh, what else window sizes so again you can tweak games for if you're using this video plugin here um, i'm pretty sure you could put any rom name in i don't know why this ROM name hasn't got any settings, but um, it's useful to know it's there and you can set window height and width on that. And it's good to see actually, I imagine a lot of the native res might be A64 by 520. I don't know what exact ratio that is, but that's what they run in, so that's useful to know as well. It looks like that's the case on a lot of those games. But again, play with that, see what works best for you. Okay, next file. Um, actually, I'll skip the import auto one for a second, come back to that. So the next one after that is nano moopin 64 plus.cfg. And it's in this file that you can change your video driver. So you can move from gles 2 n 64 to the rice one. And also in here um, we can change, uh, with RetroArch you have things like hotkeys to exit out of emulator, and this is the file where the equivalent would be held. So a lot of it's commented really well. You can just simply read down and see what the options are, whether you want to change those. I change. I don't change hardly anything in this file. Um, but you can see under, what section are we on here? Core events, under here, if I go down to this section here, um, joystick event string for stopping the emulator. So that's effectively to quit. And here's the value, joy mapping stop. And inside the quotes, you would put um, the button that you want to act to exit. Now I'm pretty sure I'm right in saying that currently with this version anyway you can't set a hotkey so you can't hold down one button and tap another you've just got to choose a button to press to stop the emulator or do any other action so if I scroll down you've got load state, save state etc. Um, you can put keyboard keys in here but obviously if you haven't got a keyboard and just want the joypad if you've got a spare button that's really useful to put in and the format for putting this in is um, similar to some other emulators in that you put the joystick number, so if you're joystick zero, which you usually will be, you put J0 like this to say it's the first or maybe only joystick I've got. And then separately you put which button it is by saying B, um, maybe the select button on your controller maps to seven when you do things like JS test and, and you know uh, when I press select it outputs a seven. So you just put J0 B7 here. So it should work on that basis of when I press my select button on joystick zero, it would pass a joy mapping stop and quit the emulator. So that's the, the style of format. But again, I'll try and put some more details in the forum link that I put to um, help you out there. Okay. Um, and the other important thing in this file is the video modes. So if we go down here, um, it's under UI console. And you can see here, file name of video plugin, video plugin equals 
Mupin 64 Plus hyphen video hyphen N64, which is the, effectively the Glez to N64 um, plugin. And what we'll do in a second is go and look at the plugin directory so you can see the options. But that's that's where it is under UI console, and you just um, retype the different video plugin name here. But, and you can do that for audio as well, or um, input or anything. So if you get another plugin that's compatible with this version of um, Mupin 64 Plus, then you can swap them in there. Okay. So I quit out of that uh, with Control C. No, hang on. Okay, for some reason just uh, dropped a connection to the Pi there, but back in that file we're looking at the Mupin 64 Plus dot CFG. And like I say, you can use this to change the plugins. There's nothing in the video general, so I'm not sure if anything's um, compatible there at the moment. But uh, up here you've got your joystick events to map buttons to uh, key presses. And you've got examples of um, the keyboards there as well, keyboard presses to do certain actions as well. And uh, similarly, more options to tweak if you want to see uh, changes it makes. Okay, so that's mupin64plus.cfg. Then the next file is the mupin64plus.ini. Now I think this is um, ROM related, so yeah, you've got a series of ROMs with what I'm assuming is types of checksum to make sure that the ROM is valid and it's it's expecting it. I guess if it doesn't match that it won't play it. But, um, it's got quite a full set in there so I think any ROM that's mentioned here, any game that's mentioned here um, should run okay. But, uh, I, you wouldn't need to change this and I don't think you'd want to either, it would probably cause problems. So cancel out of that. Um, I'll have a quick look at that Rice um, config. I think it's basically a series of references against games. Uh, yeah okay again now, I'm not sure the relevance of this type of line here. It's obviously got a load of ROM name or game names um, with some variables there, how to render it differently. So if you use the Rice plugin, you've got an ability to tweak slightly here. Um, I haven't changed this or tried this. In fact, I haven't even tried the Rice um, video emulator because I'm not, um, I don't tend to set up N64 on my uh, emulation setups anyway. Um, tend to skip that, I never really played it years ago but it, I know it's really popular and a lot of people do want to know how to use them but again you've got that file there and no doubt it is tweakable to um, get a bit of a different experience okay now I did mention um, I did mention earlier that the in the mupin 64 plus.cfg you can change the video plugin and what we'll do now is just take a quick look at where you do that so the path that you want is cd apt forward slash retropie forward slash emulators, forward slash mupin64 plus. Now if we go in there, the directory we want is lib, that's the library, and in lib we've got um, a mupin64 plus folder again. So we change into that folder and list that directory and here are basically those plugins that we saw earlier. So by default this is the video plugin used in that file and all you've got to do to change it is type this file name instead and then Mupin64 Plus will kick in with that video um, mode so it might work, some some games might just not work at all with the standard video plugin and maybe they're absolutely fine with this plugin so it's worth changing that to see if you get uh, any different experience that's the path they are so if I type pwd you can see it's apt retropy emulators Mupin64 Plus lib Mupin64 Plus you won't need to put that into the config file you can just put the file name because it'll find it quite happily but if you want to see what's listed in there that's the folder to go and take a look at again I'm using the image 2.5.0 so if you've got if you're doing this installing it manually it could well be different um, and probably will be so just bear in mind that you're looking for the the directory with these plugins in if you want to tweak that and I think really the last thing that we need to look at is the input config and how the, the controllers are dealt with in Mupin64 Plus. So that's back to the directory we were in a minute ago, which is uh, apt forward slash retropy forward slash uh, configs forward slash n64. And we're going to take a look at, oh, mistyped that, ls hyphen lah just to get a full listing there. And we're going to edit the input auto CFG. So if I look at nano oh, nano input auto cfg.ini 
you can see here, obviously it's titled uh, for move, uh, the input auto file for Moopin64 Plus SDL input plugin. And you can see it's fairly well commented in that each name is at the top. You've got a keyboard control, you've got whatever an OS game uh, convert cable is, how the controller is wet there. If you scroll down, you've got another controller, BDA Pro X, a Boom Smart Joy Converter, um, Cyborg Rumble Pad. There's a whole series of different controllers here. If you want to have a quick search for one, just put Control W. And then maybe I search for USB. Um, we've got Roughnet Technologies USB converter and the buttons. And you can see here, it's quite clear. These are the these are the buttons that they would support, and they're all geared for N64 controllers. So they try to map um, all of those buttons. It's quite easy to see the ones that you'll need. And if you haven't got this many buttons, you're just not going to be able to. Um, use that function unless you sort of, I don't know, um, just choose the ones that you can get away with. Quite often you can skip some um, button C functions, but uh, that's the layout. Now, oh, is it a that's a quite popular one, RetroLink N64 USB clone. So that's um, already programmed in there, and that's probably pretty similar to mine. And I said earlier that I've got um, a setting here that I've done for my iBuffalo USB controller. It's not suitable for N64 really, it's missing half the buttons, um, but it works and it's good enough to test with and a lot of people have these so I can post up my settings um, for that controller on the forum link and you'll see. But basically all I'll do is repeat um, a list like this, um, I'll largely put another line in at the top um, explaining the, the, the correct file name which for a USB I Buffalo controller is USB comma two hyphen axi eight button gamepad and you've probably seen that appear in RetroLink, but um, I've got the file for that that I'll, I'll post up. And as long as you put in these um, buttons for your controller, you should be able to get it working. And you can find out which um, which buttons map to which button presses or which sort of key output maps your button presses by using something like JS Test or even looking at your RetroArch configuration files, they'll have all the numbers in so you can see what you're looking for. But these are the um, the options that you've got to map against. Your D-pad, right, left, down, up, start button, and I mean, there's not a select per se, but you could use the select button as a Z trigger if you wanted. Uh, BA, obviously you could use your B and A button on your controllers. And then you get four directions for the, the C button, right, left, down, and up. Um, triggers. And I don't have anything with a rumble pack in, but I guess you could get a controller with that and you can also um, use that feature. So all of the N64 buttons can be emulated through this emulator. You just need to find out what yours map to using something like JS Test. Um, I'll run that briefly, although, yeah, I think I've got mine plugged in. Um, and you, you output here. So if I was to put my iBuffalo controller in, I would copy it from uh, notepad or wherever you keep it. Find a spare section here at the end of one um, before another one starts, something like that. Paste it in with the right mouse button and that's my um, iBuffalo controller. If I save that then the console would quite happily see my iBuffalo. And you can see that I've put 99 on a couple because I just don't have the button so it's not got enough. So um, the rest of it's pretty easy. I've got my axis on the D-pad which is 0 and 1. Um, start button there, I've used select button for a Z trigger, I've used my BNA button there, um, I've used my trigger buttons, and I've used my X and Y for a couple of the C directions, but then, I, and then I've run out. And it's really odd playing it on like a SNES type controller anyway, so like I say, it's not really ideal for it, but it will work, and that setting there will work for you. Okay, so I'm going to quit out of that with Control X. Uh, say no, I don't want to change that, and that's pretty much all you have to do. Um, and a lot of that you could skip anyway if you want to just try the ROM by putting it in the ROM folder we saw earlier. It's just a case of um, copying them across and running it in the in those relevant folders. If you've got any questions or um, need more details, want some configs, uh, paste it up on the link I'll put in the description. Or um, if there's anything else that you want to see or emulated more details, let me know. If the video has been helpful, please hit the thumbs up like button because that really helps the um, helps everyone know that it's a useful video. And if there's anything else you want to see, just let me know. I hope this has helped for you.